Hey everybody, I'm Dan McClellan. I'm a scholar of the Bible and religion, and the fit for this video is Lobo. Let's take a look at a video. Five facts from history to show that Jesus rose from the dead. These five facts are agreed on by the majority of New Testament historians, whether believing or non-believing. All right, let's see it. Fact one, Jesus died by crucifixion. It's recorded in all four gospels, New Testament letters, and other contemporary sources. So it sounds like we're talking about Gary Habermas's minimal facts argument for the resurrection. This first one is accurate. The overwhelming majority of scholars agree that a historical Jesus was executed by the Romans by crucifixion. Fact number two, the tomb where he was buried was discovered empty by a group of his female followers. This is not agreed upon by the vast majority of scholars. I used to think that this was part of Habermas's minimal facts, and I said as much in a recent uh, live stream with some colleagues, and I was corrected. They pointed out that Habermas had never included it and had always pointed out that the consensus was not strong enough for him to feel like he could include it in his list of minimal facts. Fact three, various other followers reported experiences of seeing Jesus alive again. This is agreed upon by the overwhelming majority of scholars. Fact four, skeptics, including James and Paul, were converted after claiming to have encountered the risen Jesus. There's also a pretty good consensus here, but I think the argument that James was converted by a post-resurrection appearance might be a little weaker than the argument that Paul claimed to be converted by a post-resurrection appearance. And fact five, the early church experienced explosive growth amid these events. There's also widespread agreement about this. Five historical facts, but what one explanation makes sense of them all? The one explanation that makes sense of them all is that very soon after Jesus' death, claims began to spread that people had witnessed the resurrected Jesus. As I'll explain, deception, hallucination, and legend don't make sense of them. So you don't need any of those things to explain how these claims could have spread like wildfire very soon after Jesus' death. These were people who had just experienced extreme trauma. They were cognitively motivated, primed, and vulnerable, and it would not take much at all for them to interpret their experiences as experiences of the resurrected Jesus. Even the story of Jesus on the road to Emmaus is adapting Greco-Roman mythology to fit an experience that wouldn't be very surprising. Someone talks with someone on the road and they get a Jesus vibe from them and afterwards think, that must have been the resurrected Jesus in disguise. And then they could very easily go and tell people, hey, I experienced the resurrected Jesus on the road to Emmaus. Experiences like this happen all the time. And I think a lot of people would be surprised and probably a little horrified by just how rickety our memory and our cognition can be in certain circumstances. The best explanation is the one those first Christians gave. Jesus Christ had risen from the dead. So this is an impossible explanation. And just to move that explanation from the realm of impossible just to within the realm of possible, you would need some extraordinary direct evidence. And we have absolutely no such thing whatsoever. This is an attempt to argue that those facts are unexplainable by any other means whatsoever, and so we have to accept the impossible. And that is profoundly naive and fallacious. There are plenty of data to explain how people could quickly spread claims about someone having experienced the resurrected Jesus. We do not have to appeal to the impossible just to account for how these things could have happened.